this is the first time we were there. We're, we're, we're getting there, man. It only took us what, 31 tries? Good job, us. We are Annie and Constantine. And you're watching another episode of... Uh, you know, updates. And uh, today is a very special episode because we're turning this into a cooking show. You maybe see, now you see there's stuff on the table because we are preparing a burritos. Which is a kind of a traditional KA food, I think. It, it's something that we make every now and again. And when we make burritos, we make like a dozen of them or more. And then we eat them for the next Months. 48 hours. <laughs> And this is a kind of um, interesting episode because usually if we don't have much to show for ourselves, we're like, oh, we didn't get to do a lot of KA stuff. Sorry, we'll do better next week. Yes. But this time we actually didn't do a lot of KA stuff on purpose. I think we all kind of know this, but we always forget to realize it, is that when you try to keep working, keep doing and keep producing stuff, you just get into this rigid, clenched mind frame and you can't move anymore. So it's actually really important to take some time off every now and again, which I hear normal people do on weekends sometimes. So we took a little bit of time to reframe the situation and we decided to try some other things with the way we approach our lives, but also the way we approach KA itself and um, I think we're going to talk about this more in, in the future you don't need to spoil the bangs bangs <laughs> spill not spoil you don't need to spoil the bangs but you also don't need to spill them also don't spill spoil the bangs new angle yay yay uh, what are we going to talk about next the epiphanies there's bread on my bed. There ignore is. the bread on my bed. But do not ignore the bell peppers. Um, so, uh, epiphanies, what did you learn? Am I starting this week? Yes. Well, ideas never come from nowhere. They always come from somewhere. And usually it's something that you, you know, picked up a while ago and it just kind of took seed in your mind and it took a while to, you know, grow and become an actual thing. And those seeds don't necessarily always come from highly sophisticated places. So this particular seed, comes from Disney's Frozen. So there's this key song in Frozen that we've all heard way too many little girls sing on YouTube, Let It Go. But the thing that I was thinking about is that there are different ways of looking at it. Like there's the whole, you know, just just let it be, don't don't think about it anymore, just let it, let it go. I think that's the, the first thing you kind of see when she's like running up the mountain, she's like, let it go, it's like, screw it all. I am now on my own, I'm gonna build this freaking, you know, castle of ice and live there. But the second sentiment is let it go as in let it be free, as in don't hold back, which actually means a lot of ownership. It's a matter of owning who you are and letting yourself be free and letting yourself be whoever you are. And I like that because I like language and I like the different ways that language can you know mean and I like when I find these parallels because it extends the meaning of both of them because you kind of have to, you know, let things go in order to let go and be yourself. But I think that's kind of what, what my last few days boil down to. It's a matter of taking more freedom by just letting things be and, and giving yourself the freedom to just see what happens when you don't try so hard and not hold back and not try to fit into any framework. And, we get a lot of frameworks put on ourselves by society and by others and by whatever, but we also put a lot of frameworks on ourselves. We put the monkeys on our backs ourselves. And when we let go of them and actually, you know, open up and let out whatever is inside, really cool things tend to happen. I think that's one of the many things that I thought about this week. And I have not actually listened to the song again in the course of all of that. Congratulations. So, uh... I also used uh, that list two days for a little bit of thinking. I reflected on the things that I want to do as a person, for whatever that means, and also as an artist. 
and I've come to think about a topic I haven't actually thought about in a while, like really consciously thought about, and that is storytelling. Probably all of you remember I talked about uh, a new project, Stuttgart Full Moon, which I approached with uh, a lot of ideas like I want to include that, and I want to include that, and I want to include that. But those were all bits and pieces. I didn't have a, a feeling for the story. And I think really great storytelling comes from a feeling first. From a thing you cannot express in words. And you need to find association with that. And then if you stick to that feeling, and have the right tools. Things will emerge, things will make sense. Instead of, you know, drawing a plan to build some sort of structure, you first need to have a feeling, is this structure to be a place for a public, like a library? Or is this going to be a home for a family? Not start with the structure but start with the thing you want to tell the feeling you want to bring the things you cannot express in words and then use tools and use structure to bring out the feeling the best way possible and this is a thing I haven't been doing for a while now and the thing I want to get back into and this is my epiphany this week that that is a thing that I want to do. And that right there is why I love to work with you. Aww.